Hello. One of the things that we can all do while we're at home is catch up on our reading. And for members and friends of the New England Historic Genealogical Society, I wanted to show you briefly two books we've recently published that I think you will enjoy and are available for ordering. I'll include ordering information at the end of this message. Um, and they reflect on our long history as the nation's and indeed the world's founding genealogical organization. And the first of these books is called The Family Album, a visual history of the New England Historic Genealogical Society, 1845 to 2020. And this was edited by my colleague Cecile, and it's really a wonderful glimpse into uh, the society in all its periods, uh, you'll get to see pictures of the staff in casual settings. This is from a retreat uh, that we held last summer uh, for the staff off-site. Uh, views into our events and activities. Uh, there is, this is a great spread. These are events that we've held and honored. Uh, famous Americans presented them with their family history. For 175 years, we've been doing this for average people and for very famous people. Um, the first member of our society was John Quincy Adams, the president, and most of the presidents have been members since then. And so here we're honoring at various fundraising events, uh, famous individuals like uh, David McCullough, the author. Uh, we presented him with his genealogy, revealed a Mayflower line, and gave him a literary family tree which connected him to famous authors like Louisa May Alcott and, uh, and others. And here is Angela Lansbury, and we talked with her about her amazing career and gave her a genealogy that connected her to some 30 other actors. Uh, both in her immediate family and, and in more remote ancestry. And other, again, other famous authors, historians, uh, other people of note. One of the things I always tell our members is that these great storytellers often don't know their own story. And so we take great pleasure in revealing to them uh, something of their family history, and, and it is always personally meaningful to them, and we are excited to be able to do that. And um, here's another spread. This is great. This shows uh, the uh, behind the scenes of Finding Your Roots with Henry Louis Gates Jr., uh, the popular PBS television, television series, which we have been the anchor location for for many years now since it, the series began and very proud to do a lot of the filming of that series and work behind the scenes on that series. So there's some special pictures of that collaboration. Um, I like the earlier photographs even more. Here is one, this one always makes me laugh a little bit um, because it is the arrival of technology at the society. This is one of two Zenith Heathkit Z120 computers which arrived. And today we think that looks sort of like a dinosaur by today's computer standards, but at the time it was cutting edge technology. Um, so this is a really fun book uh, that goes all the way back, as I say, to our founding in 1845. It's a soft cover book, as you can see, and uh, lots of never before seen photographs, never published. Uh, we've never done a book quite like this, and so I hope uh, I hope you'll consider purchasing this and, and really treasuring it as a keepsake of our 175th anniversary. The second book I want to show you today is one I've also uh, worked on for a number of years, and it was written by Gerald Ward. Jerry Ward is a very um, distinguished curator of American decorative arts. He was a curator at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston. He worked closely with Kurt D. Camillo, our collections curator, and all our staff at the Society over a number of years to put together uh, this book, Family Treasures, 175 Years of Collecting Art and Furniture at the New England Historic Genealogical Society. And it's a beautiful book, really almost a coffee table book in terms of its visual presentation. The content is very scholarly and um, and well-written, beautifully written uh, by Jerry. The photographs are superb. 
Uh, we're really proud of the work that was done to uh, photograph our, our objects in the best way possible. And what members and friends may be surprised to know is that over 175 years, we've been collecting objects associated with families as families uh, donate their papers, their genealogies, their original records. They often include uh, object, objects, portraits, furniture, other things uh, that we treasure. This is a portrait, one of several 17th century American portraits we own. This is of Rebecca Rawson. I've written about her. She had a fascinating life story and really, frankly, a tragic life story. Uh, she was the daughter of Edward Rawson, who we own his portrait as well. These are by the freak or freak uh, Limner. Uh, and uh, anyway, an amazing glimpse into 17th century Boston. And um, this is, speaking of early history, this is a painting of possibly of Ninigret II. Uh, it's obviously a Native American sachem. There are three copies of this painting, one owned by the Massachusetts Historical Society, one in Rhode Island, and this one which we own. Uh, and this one purportedly is the one that Jacqueline Kennedy wanted at the, to display at the White House. And we're proud to be able to tell the Native American story as well. And here is the Hancock chair. This wingback chair is um, in a beautiful sort of maize colored fabric. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is the chair that John Hancock used and that we treasure having at our society. And speaking of John Hancock, we have a lot of objects associated with John Hancock and the Hancock family. And this huge broadside uh, was printed in the uh, 1860s uh, because there was a movement to save the Hancock house pictured here. Uh, the Hancock house was on uh, the Boston Common and developers planned to tear it down. And there was a movement to save the house Sadly, the movement failed, the house was torn down. The silver lining is that the, uh, this helped to spur a preservation movement, uh, and so it had a, a positive effect, but we, uh, we treasure our objects associated with the Hancock family. This is, we have many, many family trees, as you might imagine, at the Society, um, and some are lithographs, others are hand drawn and illustrated, pen and ink illustrations. This is one of the Folger family. Um, this is notable because the mother of Benjamin Franklin is on this tree. Uh, this is one actually I found at a, a print show in Boston, an antiquarian book and print show a number of years ago, and a generous donor was uh, made it possible for us to acquire. And it was wonderful because we had the other uh, items associated with the man who prepared this family tree. We had all his other genealogical uh, materials, uh, but we lacked the family tree. And so now this has been added to our collections. And that's the kind of thing we are always, always have an eye out for. And then finally, for those of you who've never visited our headquarters, we have a lot of beautiful furniture uh, that again, members have donated to the society or bequeathed to us over 175 years, and some of it is really very significant furniture. And Jerry has done a great job in telling the story of each of these pieces and many others. So this is a beautiful book that, again, is something we hope uh, members and friends will purchase and treasure as part of our 175th anniversary commemorations. Finally, I wanted to say I hope this finds you well. Please stay healthy, uh, be in touch with us, and visit us at AmericanAncestors.org. I'll be back next week with a look at another book that we've recently published and look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much.